the sphere and hearing from him about what happened on that dreadful day, on that Good Friday. So um, join us. Uh, next week, 7 o'clock, is the men's breakfast here. The next week, 7 o'clock, for the women at the Methodist Church in Axel. Okay, I think I got this straight down in my head, so I know where I've got to be when. But um, I don't think there's any other announcements this week. Uh, please hold Lila uh, Darrell's sister in your prayers. I'm going to add her to the prayers. Um, there are some major health concerns going on, so we want to hold Twyla and Daryl in our prayers in these weeks ahead. So um, please add her to your prayers. I don't know anything else. Um, just watch the bulletin or the announcements so you know about what's going on. So let's stand as we begin the confession. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained servant of the Church of Christ and by his authority, we therefore declare uh, we therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will sing hymn number 281 in the old book. Let us pray to the Lord. 
hath no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Here in the second reading.
being in relationships, didn't we? We were talking about how we all gather together. And we talked about what we kind of do that confession thing in the beginning. Because do we make mistakes during the week? Do we think, do we do things wrong sometimes? Yeah, it's the things we don't always know about. And we sometimes have to say, I'm sorry, because what's communion all about? What's those two things, those two, yeah. God's love. God's love. That's what it's all about. That's, that's it. And because we come and say, what else can we say? We say two words, will, what do we say? I'm I, we say, I, when we make a mistake, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But because we are loved, we get to be part of the community, part of your family. You're still loved even when you make a mistake, even when it's been a really bad day. And you may have gotten the computer taken or your tablet or whatever taken away or whatever it is. You're still loved. Because we have to say, I'm sorry. And that's what this lesson is about. It's really about saying, I'm sorry. It's about wanting God wanting us to be reunited into the family. I think it's interesting. The, the titles we give this reading. Oh, the prodigal son. The unforgiving brother. There's all sorts of names we can give to this reading. And we often tag it in different ways. What I find interesting, the more you dig into it, is to figure out that this is really about a forgiving father. A father who said, it's all right. And isn't that our father? Our father in heaven has said, even though you all just can't, can't quite get it right in the beginning with Adam and Eve. They couldn't quite get it right. Because we come and gather, I'm giving you eternal life. I am giving you permission for life to continue. See, this is really a lesson, and I think it's interesting because it follows the lost point and the lost sheep. And the lost are celebrated. The one coming, being found, really, and, and I found this interesting in thinking about it, repentance is our acceptance of the reality that God has found us in Jesus. Now think about that. Repentance, <laughs> repentance is about our acceptance of the reality that God has found us in Jesus. We, though, have to accept that we have been lost. You know, the father in this story already knew probably the personality of the two boys. One wanted to just live his life the way he wanted to live it. He had his vision and his views on how it was to be. And he was going down that path. The other one, obviously, is a little more tied to maybe tradition or wanted to have things as they were, just right in a good order. One, a little wild, maybe, needed to see the world bigger. The other one needed wanted to stay home. And yet, the Father loved them both. He gave his blessing, in a sense, to the one who said, hey, Dad, I, I really kind of like to go explore what there is out there. I want to see things maybe a little different. Is there something better that I should see? And the father says, okay, here's your portion. May not have willingly, like, just said, okay. I'm sure there was a little conversation.
conversation in that. And yet, the other son who stayed home had the benefit of having the fatted calf whenever he ate a meal. He had a chance to party with his friends. Oh, yeah, maybe he was asked. Maybe his father would have given that party that he so longed for, that seemed to be so important. And yet, and yet, really, I think the key to this story, and maybe for you and me, is that when reconciliation has happened, when the lost have found their way home, I think the center of the story, one is realizing it's all about Jesus. The story is Jesus' story. This is yours and mine. The Father is our God in heaven. It is Jesus who comes and says, my children, even when you wander away, just come home. You will be celebrated. What I think is fascinating is the father doesn't say, now, when he, when he sees his son in a distance, he doesn't say, oh, God, now great, what if he's coming home? <sighs> that one who had to, no, he runs. And in the meantime, the son has been trying to figure out what to say. How do you come back and apologize to your father who has given you life? How do you say, I'm sorry? And the son kept thinking about that speech that he was going to give. Kept thinking, what was it that he could say to be back in good grace with the father? His father, the love of a father to his son, a mother to her children, is boundless in grace. The father runs to the son, embraces him fully, dresses him in the best, and says, we're going to have a party. We're going to celebrate. See, reconciliation and the homecoming is joyful, not a scolding of what have you done? Account for me every penny that you have squandered away. Ah, you're done, you're lost, and I'm never going to talk to you again. Oh, no. The Father doesn't say that. The Father says, come, we're going to celebrate. I mean, sometimes we get all And don't know what to say when someone finally comes home. When confession has been made and the wrong has been owned, we often want to cast out and say, nah, you're not welcome anymore. You're not worthy of my time or my energy. No. That's not what we should be doing. We should be embracing and celebrating with joy, with uh, tambourine and lyre and flute. We should be singing joyful songs of praise when the lost, when the one who has not been comes home again to celebrate that homecoming. This is Jesus' story for you and me. But when we are broken, when we are wounded, when we are in pain and agony, when we hurt, the place to gather is with brothers and sisters who can celebrate. Who can celebrate. Even in those hardest times of our lives, Daryl, as you start, as you and Twyla now go through a journey, it is hard. Yeah, that's what we're here for, is to hold you both in this journey. It is for 
you and me to hold each other in the journeys that God's called us to. There's hard times. There's joyful times. But God calls us to run, to run to the one who is coming home. See, I think that's the image of baby. Eternity. Eternity, I think, is about God calling us home. And as we enter that realm, I pray that my mom got to run to meet Jesus. That my dad did that. And my grandparents. I pray that for each of us, that as our family have gone home, that we can think and know that they ran. They have comfort that the baby that I know is resting in now my mom's arms as well ran to meet Jesus. That homecoming is not to be remorseful, but to be joyous. There was for the Son and for you and me acceptance of being found by the Father. See, really, the Father is the honored one in this story. We don't often give the Father a whole lot of credit. And except in the beginning, we might say, well, that's kind of stupid on his part to give that son, you know, his, his wealth. No. It's about restored relationships. It's about knowing that we come back together. That even in that pain and that agony, we come together. And God calls us as community. You know, it's interesting if we think about the, the words, maybe, the word play on community. We are in, a, in common unity with each other. The brokenness that we each have, in a sense, we share. And we are together. That's what we are to do, is to share that pain, not let one person carry all the burden, but for the rest of us to carry it. In fact, when we were talking about our First Communion, we were talking about the history of this space. When we come to the rail, this is not just for a few people. Well, it is. But really, it's remembering the saints of the past. It is 150 years of saints that gather around this rail every time we gather to eat. 150 years of saints coming together. And 150 more years in the future. For we gather when we come together. Just as the Father gathered his son and said, welcome home. You and I are being gathered by all the saints before and to come into one place, in one time. So as we talked about this morning too, that as we are reading our readings for many, many churches across the world, they are reading those same lessons in unity. Different time zones, maybe a different day on the other side, of the planet. But many of us are reading the same lessons in common unity, in community together. This relationship in this story is about being one that was broken because of sin and restored. Did you hear it? At the table, at the feast, at a celebration that was filled with music and laughter and family and friends gather. We come together to celebrate the mended relationships with God and with each other. God's story today is not a celebration. Let us remember what 
let us mend those if we can with those that we've hurt. Maybe we didn't even know that we've done something. To go and apologize, to make amends. Maybe just share the story of Jesus in the midst of all of what's going on, in the midst of what feels like there's worse to come. Is there? Or is it us wanting to do? Do we want unity and the joy of Easter? Or we live at Gothica? Do we want to be the father? Or do we want to be the brother? Repentance is about accepting, accepting that we were lost. We have been found this day and every day. Amen. We will sing hymn number 432 in the gold book.
of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in order to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the people of God gathered here and throughout the world, we offer our prayers to the church, the world, and all the people in need. O oh God of all, we ask for your divine blessing to be placed on all leaders. Give them courage, wisdom, and a heart to discern your will to the care of your people. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for continued strength for all leaders in Washington, in each of our states, and in each of our communities. They are confronted by different opinions and have to listen with open ears. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord of peace, we ask for continued guidance for all in our midst. Our communities are so fragile in so many ways. We often struggle to know and hear your words in the midst of the chaos. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. This day, we lift up Stan and Debbie. Peggy and Don, Jennifer Inez, Ed, Scott, Callie, and Twyla. We ask that you hold them and their families in your arms. Wrap your wings around them. Let them know your healing presence. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, in a world feels with, that feels like it's paving. Ukraine and Poland, Russia and China, for people everywhere, God, let, let peace come. Our hearts are broken, our minds seem numb, the struggles are real for those who farm. Questions of seed and fertilizer. Questions of the price of fuel loom in the midst. God, I just ask that you bring resolution of peace and calm. That our world sense that communities and our churches and our people know your living presence. God, hold us this day through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we receive our offering and our noisy offering as well today.
sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We'll sing hymn number 384 of Sacred Dead Down in the Gold Book.